I probably should have this on. Okay, so there are three types of transformations that we studied in Algebra 2. We really studied the translations. That was the shifting left and right and up and down. We did that a lot with all kinds of different shapes. We talked somewhat about scale changes, stretches and shrinking. And we talked somewhat about reflections. Okay, but we're really going to hit this hard. Because you really need to understand how are these functions moving and what changes them. When you look at an equation, can you tell me what the changes are when you see it? There is a form of the equation that we're going to get to called fireproof form. You probably don't need to look that up online because you probably won't find that term anywhere. Um, one of our teachers here at Homestead High School a long time ago kind of coined that term. And it just means it's a form of the equation that you can put every one of these equations into and you could see all the changes very clearly. So we will do a lot with those things. So here are, here's a basic function, y equals x cubed. And we kind of want to go through the process of looking and seeing what's going on. Each one of the equations that you see listed at the bottom of this uh, slide are in what we call fireproof form. In other words, the changes that are affecting the x, you see those on the x side. The changes that are affecting the y, you see on the y side. Okay. Yes, we could manipulate that around. We could put things on different sides. But... It really, I think it's really a good idea to make sure you understand what's changing the y, what's changing the x. For example, in, in letter A down there at the bottom, there is no change in the y. There is no shifting, no stretching, nothing's going on. The y is just all by itself. In fact, um, here I'll write out the generic form of what we call the fireproof form for this particular function and discuss the, the individual parts. And I know it's going to look messy, folks, but, uh, you know, you'll get over it. And I will, I will kind of tell you about each one of these. Actually, I should just type them out. That would be the smarter idea. What do you think H and K have? What do you think they do to the equation? H and K. They're the shifting, right? So H, sorry, lowercase, H is the horizontal shift. K is the vertical shift. What do you think A does? What do you think that A does? Talk to your neighbors right now and see if you can give me an idea or guess what A does to the equation. Go. What is your guess that A does? Talk to your neighbors, see what they think. And what does A do? Yes, sir? Stretches or shrinks what? Horizontal stretch or shrink. What, what kind of number do you think makes it a stretch? What kind of number do you think makes it a stretch? Less than one. Do you think I was, if I was going to take this thing and I'm, I'm going to stretch it out? 
that you think I would multiply by a number smaller than one? Divide. I know you see the division, and so you're thinking in your mind dividing by a fraction would cause that thing. But in all reality, whatever that number is, you know, I'll, I need you to think, you know, like exponential growth and decay functions. You remember the, the concept of exponential growth? What kind of, what kind of growth factor number caused it to go up? The way you want your money to grow. They're all positive, okay? So what made it what made it go up versus what made <coughs> it come down? Whether or not it was uh, more or less than one. Right, bigger or smaller than one. So, what do you think? Growth is that bigger than one or smaller than one? That's bigger than one, right? So the same thing happens here. A stretch up happens in the horizontal direction when you are multiplying by a number bigger than one. A shrink is when you're multiplying by a number smaller than one. And yes, the A value is the multiplier. Uh, I am glad that you were thinking along those lines. That's, that's, that's pretty cool that you were thinking like that. So, um, A, uh, scribble. A bigger than one, A smaller than one. Okay. What about the B value? Vertical stretch shrink. Yep. Vertical stretch or shrink. And the exact same thing is going to happen here. Oh, I can't spell stretch. Evidently, I can't spell stretch. What causes a reflection? Because I haven't mentioned that at all in these in these letters. Ah, uh, it has to do with negatives, yes. Um, let me slide this up a little bit. If A is negative, hmm, if A is negative, let's see here. If A is negative... That's a change on the x. So if I had a coordinate, we'll call it x, y, and I multiply the x by negative 1, where would it go? X, negative 1, right? If I multiplied the x by negative 1, which quadrant would this thing land in? 4. I got to vote for 2, and I got to vote for 4. So now you're going to discuss with your neighbors which one you think it is. Go. Two or four? Multiply the x by negative one. What choice would you have? Choices are two or four. Two or four. It is quadrant two, those of you who chose that. Uh, negative x, positive y is going to be over here, right? Negative x, positive y. <clears throat> so if a is negative, then... We have a reflection over the what? Y-axis. Hmm. If B is negative, 
What happens if we multiply the y value by negative 1? Which quadrant? Yeah, there you go. You are down in quadrant 4, right? x comma negative y. What are we reflecting across? The x-axis. How do you get it to reflect across both and land in quadrant 3? Ah, oh, yeah, negative on both. Yep. Now, these equations that we're going to be looking at right here are simple ones, right? For instance, if you asked me to write this in fireproof form, it would be kind of overkill, but I'm going to do it anyway because you asked me to. I know you didn't, but I'm going to do it anyway. y minus 0 over 1 equals x minus 3 over 1 cubed. That's really what you're looking at right there. There's a lot of information that you normally don't write down because it's assumed to be there. Subtracting 0 doesn't do a whole heck of a lot, right? Multiplying by 1, ooh, scary, because it doesn't do anything. There's no stretching, no shrinking, not in the horizontal or the vertical, right? These two things right here are telling me, you know, I've got an A value of 1, I've got a B value of 1, so there's no stretching or shrinking at all. What's my H value? Okay, you figure out what the H value is. Drop your name if you see your paper. What is the H value in this equation? What is the H value? It's three. Several of you told me that. It's important when you look at it to realize that the equation does not include that negative. That's a part of the equation. A lot of kids want to say negative three when they look at that. A lot. How about the K value? It is. It's zero. So no shifting up and down. The only shift we have is what? The positive three. Which way is that shifting? To the right. So we have a shift to the right. Whoops. Now, we're not going to get into real super detailed graphs here, folks. Move the center point over. Here, I better pick a darker color so it's easier to see. Move that center point over to, to 3, 0. You know, draw the basic shape. Move on. Don't get hung up on, oh, it's got to have this point and this point and this point. I just want the sketch. The basic idea is... You moved that central location. That's really the important part. Okay, so what's going on with this one? Right? It's really like y plus 2 over 1 equals x minus 0 over 1 quantity cubed. You can see that not a lot of things are changing except one thing. What's the one thing that's changing? Because it looks like we got an A value of 1, a B value of 1, so there's no changing there. Looks like I got an H value of 0, so no left and right movement. But what's the K value? 
It is not two. Ah, it is negative two. Remember the equation that we wrote down? Y minus K. So what you have to realize when you see Y minus negative two, we will write that as Y plus two. But the real K value is right there. Which way is this graph moving? It's obviously on the Y side, so that means we are changing the Y, either up or down. What do you think the K value negative 2 is doing? Trust your instincts. What is your gut telling you? Say it. it starts with a D. Okay, thank you. Gee whiz, I didn't think that was going to be that hard. There we go, we got negative 2. You just give the basic shape, nothing, nothing fancy. Okay. Graph the next two. Talk to your neighbors if you are in doubt. Ask me if you need help. Graph them. Okay. Nice job if you moved it on C, you moved it left one and up four. And on D, you moved it right two and down three. Right two and down three. Um, identifying those values are really good. Now, what would happen? Use a different color if you're on the uh, go formative. What would happen if I did that? On letter D, what if I put a negative 1 underneath the Y value? How would that change your picture? Just use a different color so that you don't have to re redo the graph. You're notice you should notice that I did not change the shift. The right, left, up, down, all that stayed the same. How does that change your picture? We talked about the reflection, so start thinking. How does it change my graph? This is a reflection, folks. A reflection. What did we say it was a reflection across? The x-axis. Now, if you wanted to, you could kind of imagine, you could imagine a line right through here, which is kind of like an x-axis, right? And if you did the reflecting, what would it look like? If you reflected that across the, the orange dotted line there, what would it look like? It'd have to look something like this. So that central location did not change. It was still two to the right and three down. The only thing changed was the Y values. Everything got reflected across that X-axis line. 
Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Right. We're still talking about positive numbers. In fact, we're, what we do is we separate. So we separate, like, like let's say it was negative two-thirds in the bottom there. The two-thirds causes the shrink, the negative one causes the flip. It's almost like there's two things happening right there. I like how you're thinking. See if there's anything else. Okay, so these on this next page are all reflections. You're starting out with a basic square root function. Now, another way to write this in terms of what we did earlier, in terms of the K, the A, B, K, and H stuff. Actually, I should probably. There's the same function. That one there is letter A. You can tell there's no shifting left and right. The only thing we have to concentrate on is this thing. What is that thing doing to the graph? It is a reflection. It's changing the x value. When you change the x value, which axis do you jump across? You jump across the y axis. So this one is forcing that to happen. What about the next one? The next one is y minus 0 over negative 1 equals the square root of x minus 0 over 1. We're changing across the x-axis. So it's doing this. What do you think the next one's doing? Well, the next one, they did a little bit of algebra, but guess what? It's exactly the same as letter B. This is y minus 0 over negative 1 equals the square root of x minus 0 over 1. Absolutely no difference.